Welcome, everyone, to uh, another uh, episode of Biz Talk Africa as part of our special series with Biara Veritas, uh, Shaping a World of Trust. And our, our wonderful guest today is Mark Roussel, uh, who is the uh, SVP of uh, Africa for Biara Veritas. And um, we're really excited to have Mark again. Uh, always a pleasure, Mark. Thanks for being here. And uh, Thanks. Yeah, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm, of course, the host, Jason Schuster, uh, Vice President of Business Development here at BizTech, and my wonderful co-host, Videa Mike, who is the co-founder of Questa Solutions. And we are really excited to dive into a topic that we've just started talking about, but uh, I, I love it. It's very close to me, and that is sustainability. So today is shaping a world of trust through sustainability. Mark, if you could give our audience, again, uh, I know you've been here before, but give the audience maybe another quick introduction of your, yourself and your background, a little bit about Vera, Vera Veritas, and then we'll, we'll get into this really exciting topic. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be back with uh, this talk. It's always a, a real pleasure sharing a bit some ideas and thoughts about uh, Africa and about shipping a world of trust. So uh, I'm the head of Bureau of Veritas. Bureau of Veritas is the... Uh, very old company created in 1828. Uh, it's one of the leading company in the world uh, for uh, testing, uh, certification and inspection. And, and what we are doing, it's a business to business to uh, customers, uh, to society business, where we try to uh, accompany our customer dealing the, with the risk related to uh, health, safety, uh, environment, sustainability, uh, and everything like, like that, and more and more governance and social responsibility. And we are uh, about 72, 72,000 people, employees throughout the world. And we are operating also in Africa, in most of the countries in Africa, since more than 120 years in Africa. So it's also an area we know quite well. Wow, wow, 120 years. That's amazing. There's only a few companies in the world that have really been around that long, you know? Uh, in Africa, I think we, we've been there for quite a while. Yes, not, not so many. I think we, we are one of the oldest one. And in Africa, I think we are one of the one having the, 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 the biggest footprint uh, operating in most of the countries in Africa, which is quite rare because very often people are in Africa, but they are either in the French speaking part or the south, well, southern part or the eastern part. Very few of them are really a bit everywhere in Africa, which is... Not, uh, not only that, Mark. I mean, the good thing about it, you're there in Africa, but you're providing a service as well. So that, that to see how Africa has grown and how you, your footprint is growing together with it, um, you know, surely you guys are actually helping, you know, evolve the ecosystem within Africa as well. Yeah, and in fact, we are uh, accompanying most of the new development in Africa uh, because every time someone has a new project, very often they are looking for new uh, support, technical support, and, and very often they turn to us to, to get that uh, insight that might be about the uh, local uh, regulations. Sorry, I've got some uh, siren going on outside. I'm calling you from uh, Dakar, Senegal today. Huh? Uh, and also, very often, we are trying to, to provide the uh, technical support which is requested. As for example, if you are creating a new mine or uh, a new building, uh, to, to, to perform that project properly, people then very often look for uh, a technical advisor or someone uh, able to ensure the good quality and that the project is delivering the appropriate level of service. And that, that leads us on quite nicely <clears throat> to... Have you seen that people are now asking for a view on sustainability? Definitely. Uh, and I'm going to share with you a very recent testimony of this morning. I was before joining you, I met with some customers and sustainability is a growing issue because it's becoming a worldwide demand mm -hmm. from employees, but also from the customers. Uh, and those customers might be local ones, but also international ones. Uh, and those customers now, they are requesting to address the new topics 
which are linked to uh, climate change, which are linked to uh, social responsibility. Uh, and really, it's also happening in Africa. Africa is not left aside. Uh, and this morning, one of my customers was telling me a, a worldwide company is asking very precise questions about how are they, do, do, they, do they foresee to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, and one of the questions of the customer was also and was sharing with me is, how can I demonstrate to my own customer that what I'm doing, I'm doing it really. So not definitely is there, it's there and it's growing. Fantastic. So what is the diversity of the services that you guys offer um, to help your customers um, on their CSR journey? What, 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 what else does, um, do you guys offer? So CSR journey is a, is a complete one. We can start at the very, very beginning with the supply chain to help our customers to assess their own suppliers, uh, as for example, to make sure that through some uh, social audit, you make sure that your supplier is uh, respecting the uh, some uh, law and labor, especially labor law or uh, mm -hmm. child uh, not employing uh, people under the age of working, uh, that kind of topic. Uh, then you can go through the way uh, accompanying them also if they are building new premises to make sure that their premises are compliant in terms of energy saving or energy, uh, energy consumption uh, and not consuming or burning uh, electricity or burning fuel uh, through a, a gen set only to, uh, to, 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 to have some air con running from nothing. Uh, and then you can continue like that also to the uh, social responsibility or project or governance. So we try to, 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 to combine them all along the, 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 the projects and, the, and the, the lifetime of their issues, which is a, a growing one, in fact. Okay. Wow. That does, I mean, like, Jason, for me, <clears throat> that's a real eye-opener, right? Because, you know, you, you think about, like, we had this session last week on, on sustainability right. and CSR, but, you know, as you dive deeper into it, starting from the beginning, the, 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 the footprint, um, how employees are treated, child labor laws, even your energy um, consumption, all of those aspects, you sort of never really think that that's part of the journey. So it's really good that you guys are, are sort of doing that. How do you... <laughs> Sorry, how do you take your findings like um, backwards? So, for example, <clears throat> you're doing something for a client. You find that one link in his supply chain probably doesn't have its um, CSR up to, up to speed. They become, uh, you guys can consult for them. You can help them get um, the accreditation that they need. So they become more competitive. We, well, we accompany them, yes and no. We accompany them in the way for a company to structure their actions and the way to audit them and to certify them along the way. As for example, for a building to demonstrate that the building is uh, their energy, uh, energy consumptions and energy management is in line with the, as for example, the ISO 50,000. But we are always separating consultancy and certification. So if we are performing as, for example, the certification, we cannot do the consulting. So we, we need to be uh, to, to, to avoid any conflict of interest. So in some cases, we can help, a but we can very often help a company to design the way they will uh, organize and fully integrate sustainability in their strategy. Because as of today, it's becoming with many topics. And it's a bit difficult to, to get it organized and, and how, where, where do you start? Now, if we find some non-compliance, as for example, in the supply chain with a certain supplier, I'm not the one gonna fix the supplier. It's not my role. What I'm gonna do is to help the customer to identify that he may have an issue with a specific supplier. You see what I mean? So Absolutely. then we can help him to, to tell him okay, that supplier should go for this or that. But I'm not the one who's going to fix the supplier. It's going to be another part of PV who could do that, but it's not my proper role. But as of today, the, one of the issues for the customers is not only to, to manage all those topics, but on top of that, to be able to demonstrate they did it. 
because right. even if they are doing it, if they claim themselves, and this morning I had a discussion with the customer, he was telling me, yes, but when I say I do that, people don't believe me because I'm saying that I'm a good guy, but everyone can say he's a good guy. So, and here the need is increasing to have a third party coming in to uh, go, uh, to put the, the, I would say the, the boots and to go in the field and to check that what they are claiming is real. Mm -hmm. Because if not, it's gonna to be too easy. Everyone gonna claim I'm a, I'm a good company, I'm a good guy, everything I do is perfect. Okay, that's, a, that's an easy talk. So our role is more to accompany and to check that people are walking the talk, if I may. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. So I, I find it really interesting how, how integrated sustainability is in your process. Um, one thing that came out of our session last week on sustainability was the, the fact that, that Africa in general is pretty far behind on sustainability with, with companies. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me like potentially Bureau Veritas is maybe a little bit ahead of the game. How long has sustainability been a big focus for Bureau Veritas in general? And how long have you been pushing sustainability within, uh, within the African region? Well, I would say sustainability, the, the way we talk about it as of today, is, is kind of part of the DNA of, of, of BV. When we've okay. been before, you didn't call it sustainability, but before, decades ago, when we were inspecting and making sure, as for example, that the Northern Gas Company is uh, applying all the rules for the welding and all the uh, appropriate uh, compliance with the rules. The, most of those rules is to avoid uh, oil spill, uh, spillage, uh, leakage. Uh, and most of those rules are, uh, were already there to ensure that the environment is respected. When we, we've been testing uh, food uh, for, pest, for pesticide, was not called sustainability, but it was already with the target of avoiding pollution or avoiding disease. So that mindset is already there for decades within BV. The point which is a bit new for us, and we are going a bit further, is to make it more as a complete, comprehensive, uh, consistent uh, package, and also to go a bit further in terms of uh, social responsibility, governance. So we've got new topics arriving on, like uh, new uh, renewable energy. So as of today, now we are part of the, uh, some part of the uh, technical hydrogen committee to, uh, to study how can we uh, use better hydrogen in a sustainable way. Uh, we are part of, we're working on wind farm. We've been working with the, uh, LNG new vessels, which are uh, energized by LNG instead of uh, fuel. Uh, so we are part of new technical things like that, which are totally embedded in sustainability. But the, 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 the nature and, and the initial mission of a company like BV is very sustainable. When you are working mm -hmm. on safety, when you're working on quality, when you're working in environment, it's kind of our DNA. We're just going a bit further and we also trying to make it a bit more um, comprehensive for everyone to, 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 to put it in a kind of a package so that, and, okay, you can have some tool. And it's education as well, right? Because <clears throat> these topics, I mean, we got, Jason and I had a masterclass last week on, on understanding the difference between ESG and CSR and stuff. And we use these terms interchangeably but educating yeah. people what it means is so critical as well because yeah. there's subtle differences. And the more we are aware, I mean, I think it sort of starts to drive consumers' behavior as well. People mm -hmm. will demand things that are, you know, have complied with, with ESG yeah. CSR um, requirements. It's true. And even for, for, for all of us, huh? One thing I think BV, we, we, we need to, uh, and in Africa, I do believe, and it's my task, huh? we need to develop even more than today is to have more um, awareness webinar, training webinar, mm -hmm. uh, and 
I, I think we do need to uh, have people more understanding what it means uh, and what does it mean to, to, to respect some quality standard? What does it mean to, to act in a responsible manner? Because if you don't respect those standards, very often it means either you put in danger the lives of some people or you're going to pollute or you're going to uh, 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 put at risk some uh, environmental uh, issues. And that education, I fully agree with you, Vidi, we need to make an effort uh, everywhere in the world, but I'm going to talk for my region, which is Africa. For Africa, I need with my team to maybe to do that a bit more uh, systematically. What we're trying to do now, and I'm initiated this year, is to have much more uh, systematic partnership with the uh, engineering school and with, with schools in order to um, give those messages uh, at the, uh, uh, from the very beginning. Because Absolutely. I believe that if you people in uh, engineering school or even high school start to have that kind of uh, mindset, education, awareness, will be much easier afterwards to, to have them understanding and having the, the right behavior to take that into account in their decision making. Absolutely. Yeah. And demand is what drives um, supply at the end of the day. So if, for example, <clears throat> we take something simple like packaging, if you yeah. know as a young person that, you know, something wrapped up with all this plastic is bad for the environment, you're not going to worry if you get it in a, in a paper bag. You're going to be like, that's cool. I want that because, you know, this is what it means. And I think having that education starts to drive people's choices, their behavior, what they want, and the supply chain reacts to that. So I, I, I love the fact that you guys are investing in that. And, and that, that is so key. Education is so critical, as well as checking in the past. Now, yeah. influencing from the beginning and leading from yeah. the front is so important. I, I think so. And, and I think my, I'm, I'm going to say I'm quite admiring the, 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 the youngest people because they are much more aware that we may have been in the past. So uh, we do need to increase education and to increase awareness. But I must say that uh, many young ones are much more, are very sensitive to all those subjects. Yes. Uh, and that makes me very uh, optimistic for the future and also quite optimistic uh, about that demand. I think more and more people will want to know uh, where the things are coming from, uh, uh, and to make sure they are dealing with uh, appropriate company, which makes a reverse quite the subject quite important for uh, all the companies in Africa or out of Africa, and also very difficult because that may involve many different topics. That, that's the part which is a bit tricky. It's you you may have issues coming from a bit anywhere. Yes. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, you know, what I'm hearing from you, Mark, again, just. It sounds like BV really is somewhat of a leader in sustainability, Absolutely. at least in Africa, for sure. Right? I mean, obviously, glo globally, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of leaders, right, in in sustainability. But in Africa, it sounds like BV might be one of the one of the serious leaders in sustainability. I, I think in our uh, industry, well, I think we BV understood quite quickly the, 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 the importance and. Uh, what we can bring to the table, which is always the same, is the same is we have a role to play. Uh, and we do believe that we shall not keep silent. We shall uh, maybe express ourselves a bit more often. Uh, maybe we, we need to talk loudly a bit more often, explaining people uh, the interest of that and why we should do that and why we should move in that direction. Because most of the BV employees can tell you, many of them are very convinced about that. They are uh, people working for quality, for safety, for testing. That kind of population of employees, they are very easily convinced about uh, uh, the importance of doing things properly. And, and now it's about educating everyone uh, about it. One more difficulty, which is true for everyone, is also try to figure out the long-term impact of what you're doing uh, and not only for the company but also for the society and here it's it's also important to have bv participating in some uh, like hydrogen committee and uh, other kind of stuff to better assess 
or the uh, aspect of a new uh, subject, uh, upcoming subject can win. Uh, and I think the same, BB is more and more involved and more and more active in all those uh, new, uh, I would say, council or committee. Uh, and because I do believe that we have some say here. Wow. So, so with that being, being so involved, uh, could you share with us maybe some of the more substantial projects that BV has, mm. has done in Africa recently? So in Africa, we've been working a lot with uh, more and more with uh, ISO 50,000 uh, uh, certification for some banks and from some uh, new uh, companies. We've been working on some LNG projects to help the companies to develop new uh, gas projects, which is a uh, uh, new renewables. We've been working on some uh, geothermal projects in, uh, in Kenya with the renewable energy. Uh, we are working also on some new dams uh, and we are also working on, on our own on some new CSR actions. As for example, here in uh, Senegal, we are also supporting as a company, uh, an initiative which we call a, a village pilot, which is to help some uh, young guys. So we are also trying to do our part in terms of CSR and uh, uh, actions uh, throughout Africa. And we are working also on some um, projects with uh, major companies to have some kind of a green label and to, to define with them some new uh, referentials. Uh, and then we will work with them to uh, make sure this is applies throughout that company throughout Africa. So a lot go work going on and a lot of discussion with customers currently on those topics. Wow. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so, so Mark, how do, um, how do people contact Bureau Veritas? Should they say, you know, like, you know, we want to be able to use your services. How, how do we, how do people contact? So um, well, through the, the, the website, you've got Bureau Veritas, you've got Bureau Veritas Africa, you've got some uh, email, contact email, uh, and that's really easy. And then we can uh, uh, put you in contact with uh, whoever you want in, in, in Africa. But I think the website, uh, Bureau Veritas website is the easiest way to get in touch. Uh, or locally, then you can find Bureau Veritas in most of your countries. So it's quite easy to, to find out the right person. You can look at my email. It's quite easy to find people because on LinkedIn, you can find me even if you wish and contact me. I've got regularly a direct message on LinkedIn asking me questions and then I put them people in contact. It's quite easy. Nowadays, it's a quite a easy uh, things to get in touch with people. It's, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Absolutely. the interesting thing, Jason, <clears throat> if we look at some of the contacts and programs we've had before, like right. guys in South Africa, you know, the work that they're doing with the farmers and all this kind of stuff. I mean, when you look at this circular economy and the conversations we're having with Mark, even within Africa, they probably don't know about his service. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's programs like this that sort of brings it out, right? Because at the end of the day, they want to export more. They want to market more of their business outside. And to be able to have that trust uh, is what Bureau Veritas creates. So people start to trust the product and the output a little bit more. I agree with you. And I think it it's may, might be a, one of the uh, uh, lack of awareness in Africa. I think in Africa, people still, uh, or maybe not only in Africa, I'm just talking about Africa because that's my region. But definitely, I do believe that people still underestimate the importance of doing things which are fully in line with the uh, standards, fully, uh, you can have a third party uh, uh, confirming that what you're saying is the truth and, and just relying on your name and trying to sell something outside without any uh, big brand or big name, it's not that easy. And, and I think building trust, uh, we, we definitely, I think Bureau Veritas can help uh, a company building trust with uh, its uh, own customers, which is key. Uh, Absolutely. And it's not that easy. It's not that even between, uh, within Africa, between countries in Africa, because it's not that easy to trust someone else. You don't know. Do you know, that is such an important topic because right now people could have the flashiest websites 
all sorts of videos and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it's still some, you know, you're just taking some guy's word for it, right? But when you have a company as old as Bureau Veritas that has built, you know, their name on actually doing what you say you're going to do, that adds so much credibility. So if I see a product that has Bureau Veritas stamp on it, I'll be like, I know that's good. I know what has gone, you know, checking the quality and everything there. And I, I, I want to have that. And I would say, even if you don't have any stamp, you don't know the guy, do not hesitate to come to us because we can be your ears and your, uh, your eyes very quickly anywhere, anywhere in the world. So instead of trusting and agree with you, people as of today maybe are too much trusting uh, the uh, nice website. Well, in case of any doubt or before trusting like that, Go to people like us, we will go and check very quickly a bit anywhere uh, in the world. That's very easy to do. Uh, and people are very fun at not doing it because they don't know. They don't know that exists. And it's not that, it's quite cheap. And especially, you know, the, the, the funny part there, it's very fun. People think, oh, is that a service for big companies, which is totally untrue because the big companies, very fun, they can do it themselves or they know us, mm. they are using us. But when you are a small company, you cannot afford to, to, to trust a supplier or customers. And at the end, you've got a big issue. So you can go to us and to check a factory. You can fact check some facilities, some production facility, just to make sure the guy is able to do what he's saying. So Absolutely. I, I think it's an easy one. <clears throat> yeah. Now I, I we have a we we have a few minutes here, but I think I think that we can go a little bit over our time if everybody's all right with that. But um, if if not, let me know. Uh, one thing that just kind of came to my mind, and I'm just curious. You shared some some projects that Bira Veritas has done in Africa, and and we've talked a lot about what Bira, Bira Veritas is doing right now. But where, what about forward looking? Look looking ahead. What what are what are some things that we should expect to see or changes we should expect for the future of sustainability in Africa? What do you I'm think? A... Maybe that's a weird question, but I, I wanted to toss that out there. <laughs> a few, few things there. Uh, I, I do believe that in the future, you may see some new tool appearing, allowing you to check the, in a very simple manner uh, the different aspects of a company of a, or, or a service. Uh, and we're working a bit on, on that kind of stuff, but you should be aware in the future to, to check very quickly what the company is doing with in terms of suppliers, in terms of, of uh, uh, energy consumptions, in terms of corporate, corporate social responsibility, governance, in a very easy way. As of today, it's very complicated. And even with the certification and all those logo, as of today, it's quite tricky to, to know exactly who is doing what. And I do foresee that thanks to the new technologies, thanks maybe to some blockchain tools, thanks to some uh, aggregate tools, aggregating tools, we should be able to have that check perform much more quickly than today and just to, to, to have it done. And here it's, it's key because when that's going to happen, the one who are not up to speed, everybody is going to see they are not there. Mm. And, I'm, and I think some people underestimate that as well. They still think, okay, I'm not up to speed, but nobody knows. And I, 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 will, get, I will not get caught by the radar. But <laughs> I do believe that the radar is going to be very quickly, much more sophisticated with giving you a very accurate information much more quickly. And those who are not up to speed, the wake up can be hard. Yeah. That's my feeling. And I think in Africa, like uh, my, once again, I talk about Africa because I'm in charge of Africa, but I think all the companies in Africa need to be aware, guys, everybody, very soon, everybody is gonna know what you're doing or not doing. So you better move now mm. because if you don't move now, one day you may be in trouble. Wow. And some, and I think some companies, and I've been discussing <clears throat> even this morning with some companies, they well understood they need to move. They need to improve on many subjects. 
and it's not that easy, but uh, everybody is trying to do it little by little, subject by subject. But I do believe, yes, I do believe that transparency and the access to the information going to be in the future more and more easy. Absolutely. Uh, Emerging uh, technologies. Yeah. And that may, may be a game changer for many companies, especially the bad ones, I would say. <laughs> well, you know, it's, peer pressure can, can be a, uh, a very powerful positive force as well, mm-hmm. right? In this case. Right, yeah. that transparency, it's that peer pressure of everyone's going to see what I'm doing. Gosh, I better, get my, <laughs> I better get my act together, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it's changing, isn't it? Like regulations yeah. is moving away from governments and a little bit more into the private sector. And, and yeah. people are in control of their data, of what they want, and technology is allowing them to do so, to make those decisions. As you say, it's, it's going to be behind regulation nowadays because it's going to be the consumer, it's going to be the uh, Absolutely. investors, they want something. They don't care about regulations. Even if the regulation is not asking for that, they want that. And if they are, if they are able to have access to that piece of information and you, are, you don't give what they want, they will not buy or they will not invest mm. or they will not work for you. That's right. And this one is, I fully agree with you, VD. It's far beyond regulation. And I think that's the biggest change over the past two years. Now it's private sector, consumers, investors, they took control. Yeah. They definitely took control. Absolutely. Well, so real quick, wrapping up, Mark, last thoughts. What are your final thoughts or advice to companies regarding their integrated sustainability? Just any kind of last thoughts before we go. I, I, I think you, you need to take it very seriously, first of all, and you need to uh, think about it, uh, is that English? Holistically? Completely. You know, in an uh, exhaustive yeah. manner. Holistically. So as of today, very often we look at one point or we say, guy, yeah, I'm not going to make an, uh, an effort or energy management. That's good, but that's not going to be no longer be enough. So you really need to put everything on the table and things uh, and start thinking about a complete, consistent system, allowing you to know what's going on and to move at about the same speed on all the subjects. Because if not, you're going to move on one subject, but you're going to be caught by the other one. So you need right. to be consistent of something which is really consistent. Uh, and I know and I'm fully aware it is not an easy task, but uh, it's a challenging one for everyone. But I think it's a quite exciting one for the future and for our kids and for, for the planet. So it's a good one. It is. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate that. By the way, this has nothing to do with our topic, but this was one of our most successful live streams of all time. We had more viewers on this show today than we've ever had before. So one, I'm, happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give Mark all the credit here. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, it's like, I think one it's pushing me to, uh, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a big talker. So you are the one pushing me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I, that's uh, that, that's, that's our job. That's our job. Get you, yeah, push, push <laughs> you to talk. But this is this subject. It's so interesting to people. It really is on everyone's Absolutely. mind. Um, Absolutely. And and I think that I I love that we have companies like Bureau Veritas that are leading the charge that have influence that have a big footprint that can make a difference. Yeah. Right. There's a big difference between me in my little office here at home, you know, <laughs> saying, yeah, let's be sustainable versus a company like Bureau Veritas, do, you know, really leading the chart. It's, I love it. And, I, and, and clearly our viewers love it. So let's, I, I think that this is a topic we can, we can continue to drill down on because there's, there's still more. There's still more to talk about. <laughs> Happy to hear that, and uh, always available to, to discuss with you. It's always a pleasure for me, and uh, I, I, as you can hear, I guess I'm really passionate about it, and uh, I love what I'm doing. Absolutely, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. 
Well, anyways, we're we're out of time. We went over a little bit. I just I couldn't help myself because we were well. Again, we have so many viewers, and uh, the yeah. subject is just so interesting. So, uh, Mark, thanks again uh, for being thanks. here. Love this series that we're doing with Bureau Veritas, shaping a world of trust. Uh, looking forward to the next one. And uh, as always, thank you, uh, my wonderful co-host, Videa. My pleasure. Love having you here and helping me not have to do as much talking. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I can always count on Vidi to keep the, the conversation really interesting and going. And, uh, and, and Mark, thanks for, for, for talking as well. Just yeah, really great insights. Love, Absolutely. Love thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, Vidi. No and problem. We'll the next one. Until next time. Until next right. time. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.